Hello, crafty friends, and welcome to day 19 of my Crafty Advent 2023 live series. You might have seen scrolling across the bottom as the intro was showing that today's actually is pre-recorded because I am traveling out of town, but I did want to make it look like a live. So that's why we have the two cameras and it might look like some of the other videos from this series, but this is pre-recorded. Now I do have it set to premiere, which if I can swing it, I might be over in the chat. If I'm not able to make it to the premiere, I hope that those of you who are here to watch it will chat with each other. I might throw out a question from time to time that you can answer over in that chat. And as always, you can answer it down in the comment, yeah, comment section below. Um, if, oh, I just lost my train of thought. So you're gonna get some of that during this live. But I guess I forgot to introduce myself. If you don't know me, my name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And each day from the 1st to the 24th of December, I am opening my three Crafty Advent calendars from Tailored Expressions, Spellbinders, and Crafters Companion. And then we choose live which company I have to create with, and I make a tag. Now, I have some special giveaways going on with this series. To find out more about the series, make sure to check out the kickoff video, which I have linked below. But basically, each day, if you are here with me live, which it does change a little bit today, and I'll tell you later, but if you're here with me live, you can be entered to win the tag that I made that day. And those giveaways are open anywhere in the world as long as you're a subscriber. Now, if you are a U.S. subscriber and you want to be entered to win either a Spellbinders or a Crafter's Companion Advent Calendar, you will want to make sure that you are collecting each day's secret words. And then you'll compile those at the end. And I will be back at the end of the month with a video telling you exactly how to enter those into the giveaway. But remember, they are secret words. It's very important you do not share them or point them out in the chat or the comments because I really want those of you who are watching, like you right now, to be the ones who are earning those entries into the giveaway. And yet, yeah, please don't share it because unfortunately I'll have to disqualify you from the entire giveaway. And that's no fun for anyone, is it? So overhead, here are the tags that I have made so far. Um, let's see, it's actually the 17th for me, but this is day 19 for you. So here are the 18 tags I have created and they all have one thing in common and that is the color combo, which we chose during the kickoff meeting. I have some different shape tags and as long as I incorporate the selected company into the tag for each day, I can use any other past advent Alan past advent calendar gifts I have received to this month, but I'm really trying to stick to just what I received in the calendars and then the inks, markers, and card stocks that we pre-chose for the, in that kickoff video. Um, I'm trying to think, I feel like I've rushed through things, like I need to say something, but you know what? Maybe I'll think of it later. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get these tags picked up and put away. And then I will bring in the advent calendars and we will get going today. Now, even though I am recording this kind of like a live, there will be points where I might speed it up. You know, if it's a process that takes longer, but you will see, you know, my thought process from beginning to end. I just, you know, if I have to do something fussy, like sometimes those layer die cuts, I might just speed that up in post-production. All right. Bring it in my calendars. Looking for day 19 in the Spellbinders Advent Calendar first. All right. Down here on the left, probably three and a half by two or so. I always like when we're having a live chat for the viewers to guess what they think it might be. So if you're here for the premiere or just if you're here watching the video, you can put it in the comment section. Let me know what you think this might be. Yesterday I got sequins and used those in a shaker. I'm gonna guess this is some stamps. All right, let's see if I'm right. Oh, I think it is. Look right here. It says, thank you for the lovely gift. You made my day for all you do. This is very similar 
we got a birthday set earlier in the month and I actually used it on yesterday, yesterday's tag that looks like kind of the same font and the same ideas. Oh, that does not want to come out of there. Nice little, just that will be, um, a, oh goodness. That will be a very uh, commonly used stamp set. Thank yous. We all need those. And now for Crafter's Companion, looking for day 19 as well, right here in the middle. And this one is probably two, well, maybe two and a half by two. I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess um, a stamp and die. We've been getting lots of those. Let me know what your guess is over in the chat or down in the comment box. Comment section, I guess. Ooh, it is a stamp. We have some stamps and some dies. So we had two little stamp sets. And then two dies that coordinate. Let me get a piece of paper so I can show you these. So here we have a little wheelbarrow with some pumpkins in it, a little pumpkin and a little vine, which there are some of those same vines sticking out of the wheelbarrow. And then this is going to die cut the little pumpkin and this will die cut that. That's pretty cool. And now last but not least, tailored expressions. Let's see what we got. Okay, this one is kind of a bump there on the thicker side. I think this is an easel. The past few days we've gotten some calendar goodies um, and I bet this is an easel to put that on. Let's go ahead and see. You could use that to display the calendar if you got this one, or you could maybe even display your latest card on that. Now, I won't be able to use that, of course, in today's project. So let's share the screen and we'll pick out what I have to use today. If I took off tailored expressions, I would now have two viewers' choices, which you guys aren't here to tell me what you want to do. So what I'm going to do is turn everything back on since we have used, you know, a, oops, good majority of that. And I'm going to turn off the viewer's choice for now. And I have to turn off tailored expressions because I cannot use an easel maybe to take the picture later. So here we go. Let's spin the wheel to see what I'm working with today. Crafter's Companion. So we'll hide that one. And this is when I always start to get really nervous because now I have to come up with a tag that I'm going to create. But luckily, since we did narrow down the color palette, sorry, you might not have been able to hear that. Since we did narrow down the color palette, and that we're doing tags. It makes it a little easier for me each day. So I think I'm definitely gonna need my Olo markers. Oops, sorry for the noise there by the microphone. Definitely need my Olo markers. I think I'll do the background in Sweet Basil. And I'm gonna make a pattern on the background using the little branch die. So I'm gonna get that out. And I think that, of course, for the focal point, I have to use the wheelbarrow, right, with the pumpkins. Here is a look at the color palette card we chose for this series. It just, again, it helps me narrow down and have to make less choices each day. And now I need to pick out a tag, which I have not used the My Favorite Things, what is it called, fold up tags a whole lot. So I think I'll do that. It has the base tag, and then it has some toppers that this, this part down here, it lifts up. So 
I think this is the one I've used. Let's use this little scalloped one here. That's kind of cute. Right down here, it has a scallop border. Now, if you are interested in any of the products you see me use, um, that, you know, like are these tags or the card stocks or tools, I will update the product list in the description box below once the video is recorded. So you can check it out. Some of them might be affiliate links, which means I get a small commission, but that is at no extra cost to you. Um, good time to remind you that if you ever have a, a creator or an artist that has shared, you know, like maybe they use a stamp set and you're like, I have to have that stamp set. If they have affiliate links, please click on those. It gives them, you know, just a little bit, shows your appreciation. And again, it doesn't cost you anything. Sometimes I'll even reach out to an artist I might know has a scrapbook.com affiliate, but maybe they haven't shared something that I want to buy, but still, if I use that link, they get credit for it. So that's one easy way to support. But as always, you can also, to support me, help support me, Give this video your stamp of approval. Click on that like button below. Share it with a friend. Leave a comment. That helps us tremendously as well. Another big thing is if you watch the videos all the way through. YouTube is in like, hmm, this is a really good video and I'm going to show it to more people. So not everybody knows that. So I just wanted to take a minute. All right. Let's try to figure out the tag now. I was actually trying to stall while I try to figure out exactly what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to do, that will be the flip up part. Also going to get out my toffee ink. And then I'll get out toffee and sweet basil cardstock. Might have to get some more sweet basil. I think for now that might be all I need. Wait, I might actually use this stamp set too if I think later that I need a sentiment. But for now, I think I'm going to make the toffee the background and do the flip up part out of the sweet basil. So for the background, I am going to cut two of these because I usually sign one and put that on the back. So I think my signature will show up on toffee. So I'll use that. Let me know in the chat or in the comment box what your favorite season is. This wheelbarrow or wheelbarrow, however you pronounce it, full of um, autumn goodness. Fall is definitely my favorite season. I like the cooler temperatures after probably a hot summer. And then I love leaves and fall colors. Let me know your favorite and why you like it in the comments. Oh, okay, sometimes the edges don't want to cut through all the way on the magic mat, but I actually, I should have tilted this a little bit. If you angle it, that usually helps instead of sending in the straight edge. But I'm just going to run it back through. I laid my die back in the indented part, so I think it'll come out okay still. For sweet basil, let's see if this will fit on there. Do you think we can do it? Oh, yes, I think it will work. Fit that right in there. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this a couple times just in case. Roll it forward and backward. And that one came out great. And then you'll see here it has a crease line that later we can fold that up. And I think for now, that's all the die cutting I need to do. So we'll set that to the side. I'm gonna take a, take a drink break. And bring in, I think just my foam stamping pad. So I'm gonna bring in this cushion. When you have clear stamps, you want to have some kind of cushion underneath to help get a good impression. You know, like with rubber stamps, they have the foam, you know, between the wood block or whatever and the rubber. So there's some cushion. So if you don't have a foam pad, like if you have a Misty, you could take your mouse pad out of there. You could also get a magazine if you have one. Just something that has a little cushion to help with that. And now, oh, this is not the one I wanted. I want to bring this little vine in 
and one of my tags. And I'm going to put this on a little stamp block. And I don't know if I said it, but I'm going to do some free range stamping. And that just means stamping wherever I want, right? <laughs> I can't remember who I learned that from, but I love it. And I want to do tone on tone. So I'll bring in my toffee and my sweet basil. Now, this foam pad, it likes to suck up any ink that falls off of it. So what I'm going to do is bring in a little post-it note. I think this was maybe from the Advent Tailored Expressions Advent Calendar last year. But I'm going to bring this in so this catches any stray ink. Because what will happen if I don't do that, the ink gets on the foam pad and then it gets on the back of what I'm using or it gets on my fingers and then onto the front of the piece. I'm just going to randomly stamp this all over the place. I'll kind of turn it as I go. And you'll want some to come off the edges. Fill in any open areas on the edge if you need to. And it's kind of like you're making your own pattern paper too. And this is one of those things that probably won't look perfect because we are doing it free range. Ooh, speaking of not looking perfect, look at that right there. I got the edge of the stamp. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? We're going to go with it. Only you, only you and I will know, right? And I'm going to do the same thing, but this time on the craft or the toffee tag with the toffee ink. So I need to clean this off. I think what I'm going to do so I don't get any more of those edges, some of the rubber goes pretty far out from the image. So I'm just going to take some scissors and cut off just the excess that I don't really need for stamping. And that's going to cut down on the chances of me pressing too hard and getting those edges. So if you have this one, you might want to do that before you get started. Because it's not going to hurt the stamp. Just be careful not to cut into the pattern. And now this is going to be the backer tag. So I almost think that in case the, the winner of this, if they want to give it away, that they'll have some... Here, I'll show you now how that works. So that just folds back now. That they will have some room to write here if they want it. Or maybe we'll put a sentiment there. So I'm going to try to focus my stamping just right here on the edge. Okay. That just gives a little extra decoration to the background. And we can still stay with our color palette. Now... I'm going to bring in the other stamp. And because I'm going to be using my Olo markers to color it, I do like to stamp this in, uh, what is it, VersaFine Claire, and then heat emboss it with clear embossing powder. That just helps me kind of stay within the lines. I'm going to set that die to the side for now, but I might stamp a little bit, a few more of those again later. All right, to stamp this, I brought in my Mini Misty the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And for the heat embossing, I have my anti-static powder tool and clear embossing powder. Because I am going to be using markers, today I'm using Nina Solar White to stamp onto. And you know what I'm thinking? I'm gonna bring this back in and I will actually stamp and color these. I was just gonna stamp these on their on their coordinating cardstock and die cut it, but I think it might be better if we um, if we um, color those and then die cut them. I always like to put my cardstock down in the lower right hand corner in case it comes up when either I'm picking up the stamps or if I need to re-stamp it. Just gonna try to get everything down there. And I think I'm going to want two of these little things, but we'll just stamp one at a time here. And to get in the habit, I have been prepping my cardstock even for clear embossing powder. So 
I'm going to run that on there so the powder only sticks to where we want it. And since these stamps are a little more squishy, I'm going to gently push them down because I can always lift it up and put more pressure. But if I squish them this first time, I can't take that away. All right, that looks good to me. Now I'm going to clean this off and move it. So I'll clean them all off. Remove the pumpkin and the wheelbarrow. And now I'm going to put the little vine thing somewhere else and stamp it. I got to remember that I will be heat embossing this, so I don't want to touch that. So I'm going to ink this up and stamp it one more time. That one is a little darker, but I think we'll be okay. I think I pressed a little bit harder on that one. I'm going to bring in my tray and pour my powder over it. And then I'll kind of speed up while I'm doing this. So the powder has been melted. I don't know if I can, it is now all shiny and there's like kind of a little raised area. What I think I'm going to do is go ahead and color in my images. And then I'm going to use the brother scan and cut to cut all of these out. I know that I have dyes for the pumpkin and the vines, but since I'm going to be cutting one thing out, I may as well cut it all out. Now, when I color, I've talked about this before, um, it is not my favorite thing to do, but little stuff like this, little areas, I'm okay doing. It's if you have to have something that looks like super realistic or that's a big area, not my favorite, but I do love the Olo markers and I love coloring little things. So let's go ahead and do that. This might be one of those times where I think I'll show you my entire coloring process, but, um, I will probably speed it up, okay? If you do want to know which markers I'm using, I will have the colors listed in the description box. And if you're interested in Olo markers, Lori Craig, who I have learned lots of tips from, I got to attend a little mini class from her at Stamp Joy in um, the fall. I will link a recent video that she did with Libby from My Favorite Things, where she talks a lot about Olo markers and what makes them special and different and tips on how to use them. So I will link that in the description box so you can check that out. If you like coloring, let us know what your favorite markers are in the chat or the comment box. You might have noticed that while I was coloring, I left the caps off my markers. Now that is one thing different about Olo's and Lori talks about that. But if you keep uncapping and recapping because there's nowhere for all that pressure to go, it builds up in there. And the next time you open the cap, it might like squirt out um, ink. So while you're using the marker, just I keep my caps up there so I remember not to put them back on just make sure when you go to recap them that what is um, on the the end here matches to the barcode there and that way you know you have it back in the correct end of the marker 
I almost didn't do what I just told you. Oh, while I am thinking about it, I need to give you guys a secret word. When I tell you what it is, don't forget, do not share it or give it away in the chat or comments. And you'll want to put that it is for day 19 next to it. Again, if you have questions about the secret word, check out that kickoff video. Today's secret word in honor of this stamp set is going to be, give me just a second here, let me finish this one, pumpkin, pumpkin. Let me go write that down. I'll be right back. All right. I've got my secret word written down. Now I got to figure out which is my lighter one. 8.5 or 8.3. So I do like that the Olo numbering system, just like with Copic, makes sense. Um, you know, which markers go together. I'm going to pause here because I'm trying to record the videos for you and do some laundry so we have clothes to wear while we're out of town. So I'm going to go pause, take care of that, and I will be back to finish coloring this for you. Alrighty, I am back. Before I came to my desktop, I did get out some dark grays for the wheels and I got out a darker brown for the stems of the pumpkin. So just a heads up again, I will put everything I'm using in the comment, in the description box. I did notice while I was coloring that I forgot some of the leaves, so I'm going to just come in and finish that real quick. Not perfect, but for me, I think it's pretty good. Now I am going to go ahead and pause the video here. I am going to fire up my brother's scan and cut and use that to cut these out. Just then I'll have that even border all the way around. During the first few of the lives, I did actually use the brother scan and cut live. So you might have already seen that, but for now it would just be a repeat. So I will be back. Sometimes when I color first and then use my brother's scan and cut, I get a little bit nervous, especially with something that took a little more time like this, but luckily it cut the pieces out beautifully. Now I'm going to bring back in my tag and we'll start to put this together. I'm going to go ahead and glue these two and hear these together. For this, I'm just using my ATG, which I guess I can zoom out a little bit now. And if you have an ATG and are looking to save on your refills, I did get a discount code from Tate Jungle. And that is who I have used for probably over 10 years when I buy my refills. 
Um, they're already like really reasonably priced. Now they're not the official um, Scotch brand ones. They're generic, but I've always had good luck with them. So I have down in the description box below, I have a link to what I buy. You will want to make sure that you get the correct one for your ATG. Um, but then the discount code is also down there so you can save 10% on your order. And I think that's good until the end of March in 2024. Here those together, press them down well. And now I want to figure out how I want this stuff to go on, which you know what? I probably did not need to uh <laughs> I probably did not need to cut the pumpkins and the extra there because wow, this pretty much takes up the whole front. Hmm. I was thinking like maybe I could, you know, pop this up. I was gonna like put the I was gonna put the wheelbarrow down flat and then pop up a pumpkin over here but there's not going to be room because of that crease that it would still be able to open but then i cover up the little wheel you know what i'll save these for later or maybe we'll put them on the inside and now i'm thinking let's pop the wheelbarrow up instead Add a little extra dimension to that but I do want to make sure that I don't put any foam tape like about right here because then it'll stick to the back my tag slipped a little bit I think when I was pressing it together I'm gonna fix that so it lines up down here correctly and then get some tape on the back of here I will also link the tape that I use in the description box. I buy this off Amazon and really like it. I do usually keep some scraps here on the side of it. So I'm going to use some of those to finish filling this in. I did mention it at the beginning of the series, but I was inspired to do tags for this series because my friend Danny of the Danny's Dreams YouTube channel, she did um, Tag A Day November, and she really enjoys putting them together quickly and easily. So I thought it would be a great option for this series. I will have I will link her channel in the description box below if you want to go check her out. I know she would love for you to stop by. And I'll also link um, the her tag a day playlist if you want to go check that out as well. And I'm just tucking this right behind there since it's popped up. I had a little room. And I think I might poking like coming off that side but I need to cut this down because I can't get it in there underneath there far enough oh, goodness Apple watch stop with the notifications I think we must be getting a delivery yeah there's somebody at the door you know what I'm gonna put that on the inside instead of a sentiment that way we make use of it and there's still room to write, like, you know, if it's a gift to somebody, there's still room to write in there. So that is it, guys. Here we have our tag. I'll give you one last little close-up of today's tag, so you can check that out. And now... Let me tell you how you can enter to win this. If you would like to be entered, you need to be a subscriber to my channel who is at least 18 years old, and you can be anywhere in the world for me to send this tag to. I have a form at the top of the description box below or toward the top of the description box that if you want to win this, you will fill out that form. 
I will leave it open until 9 a.m. Central tomorrow morning. I do hope to be back tomorrow to be here live for the Advent series. And I will announce the two winners yesterday and today's during that. Now, if you do enter today to win my tag, you will want to make sure that you watch tomorrow's video to find out if you're one of the winners. You will still need to fill out the claim form if you are. Um, one other thing I wanted to tell you, it is going to be a two page form. So make sure you fill out and submit both forms. You should get like a little success message after you have completely submitted it. And you do need to know, and I, I know I mentioned it on Sunday, you do need to know what today's secret word is because I just want to make sure that you're not skipping to the end. I want those of you like you right now who are here watching to be the ones entered into the giveaway. Again, um, don't forget, do not reveal the secret word below. If you have any questions on anything today, leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But until tomorrow, where again, hopefully I'll be live. I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.